Joining us now from Washington with more on that is Michael Shank, a uh, senior policy advisor for United States Congressman Michael Honda. Thank you very much for joining us. The um, landscape has definitely changed uh, in Egypt. Has it become a more dangerous landscape from the United States point of view? It's a great question. So in the last 24 hours, the Egyptian military has made several decisions, some of which are good, some are bad in the U.S. perspective. Let's look at the good decisions the, US, the Egyptian military has made just in the last 24 hours. So they dissolved both houses of the parliament, the Shura Council and the People's Assembly. That's a good thing. They suspended the Constitution. That, too, is a good thing because the Constitution is what prevented uh, political parties from organizing, prevented presidential time limits, prevented free, uh, free media, prevented independent oversight of elections. All of that is good. The military saying that they formed a constitution review committee that's going to put a product to the public for a referendum. All of that is good. What's concerning is that the military has announced today, Sunday, that they're going to stay in power for six months. They're not going to lift emergency rule. Mm -hmm. They're having elections in six months. Some of that's uh, disconcerting. Some of that's, you know, favorable to U.S. perspective. Uh, Obama made calls this weekend to King Abdullah of Jordan, Prime Minister Erdogan of Turkey, asking for help. I mean, from the Defense Department's perspective, the, the military has been a tight uh, ally and a close collaborator. All of the senior military officials in Cairo have been trained at the National Defense University in Washington. We've given them $65 billion since 1950. So, um, I think the U.S. is treading carefully here. I think it would be concerned to see the military stay in power for six months because what the protesters are saying, we want a civilian government uh, transition to immediately, not military in power for another six months. Is six months long enough to uh, write up a constitution and uh, add water and all of a sudden you've got political parties springing up in six months? Is that enough time for all of these things to happen? Well, that's a great question because in the last 30 years under Mubarak's kind of autocratic rule, the Constitution has prevented political parties from even organizing. If you had three or more people, uh, you could be put in jail for organizing any kind of political uh, campaign or political party. So how do you now create politi robust political parties out of nothing? No infrastructure was there. There are some opposition parties at the table, but that's just a small group of the, the protesting public. Uh, they have not put forth a policy. The opposition groups were going to put forth a proposal today. They didn't. Um, can we do that in six months? Uh, that's unclear. But I think the protesters are very clear about the fact that they don't want the Egyptian military in power for the next six months. They expected some kind of transitional civilian government, and they're not seeing it. So I'm guessing in, in the coming weeks we're going to see protesters down the street again. What kind of uh, signs would you have to get from the uh, Egyptian military that would spur Congress to say, you know what, uh, we give you $1.5 in aid every year. We think we're going to review that because of what we're seeing. Well, like I said, National Defense University, close ties, so too with the Defense Department, close ties with the Egyptian military. So Secretary of Defense Bob Gates, Admiral Mike Mullen, uh, who's the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, they're on the calls frequently with the Egyptian military. So mm -hmm. there are conversations happening kind of weekly here. Uh, in terms of what would make the U.S. happy, I think uh, some kind of heed to protesters' call, which is civilian government. I know Mohammed el Baradai is in close conversation with the U.S. government, White House, Defense Department. So I'm, I'm guessing the military will have to transition sooner to civilian control. Um, how that's going to happen, obviously it needs to be tentative steps, but it has to happen. Uh, a lot for the United States and for the rest of the international community to uh, watch for. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Michael Shank, uh, Senior Policy Advisor to uh, U.S. Congressman Michael Honda. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott.